guys, it's Robin, our Sally Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. This week we are doing another quick and simple project. We are going to be making these little snappy pouches. This one I don't have a snap on yet. This one has a snap. But these pouches are good. You can put, depending on the size you make, you can, some people do put coins in them. I'm always a little concerned that the change could fall out, but you could put some coins in there, some dollar bills. You can put some of those loyalty cards that you're always getting at the stores. And I don't like to keep them in my wallet because it just makes your wallet awfully thick. So it's nice just to have a little pouch form. Then I can pull this out and say, okay, here you go. Some people like to put business cards in them. Some people like to use these for like friend mail. A lot of the different crafters, the multi-crafters, the ones who do like journals and stuff like that, they like to make these little pouches. They tuck little treats inside for their friends and then they send it out as friend mail. It's a small pouch. It's not very big. It doesn't get too thick, but you can still fit a lot of different things in there. Ribbons and papers and other little things that the journal makers love to use. I love that satisfying snapping sound. Now, as you may notice, we did tissue holders last week, which is a nice, quick, and easy project that can be using up some scraps that you can make a lot of them in a short amount of time, or they'd also be great for teaching a new sewer on how to make something. I chose these this week, so we're still staying within a small, simple, scrappy, and easy, quick to make multiples of projects. Because over on Patreon, one of the tiers allows you to choose the type of videos or to request a video each month that I'm going to be making over here on YouTube or Patreon. And one of my patrons has requested some quick and easy small projects. So I thought that'd be great. I love quick and easy projects. This time, I've only made it two. I have not made 50 of these yet. Now, as always, if you have a request for a video here on YouTube, I always take those into consideration. I love everyone's little tips and tricks. You know, hey, Robin, why don't you try making this? Or can you show that? It's great ideas for videos. And I always write them down and I get to them as soon as I can. But when you're at that patron at that level, you're suggestions kind of go to the top of the list and I work on yours then I do work on to the next ones but never worry whether you're on patreon with me or not I appreciate every little comment and every little suggestion and I will get down the list to you I still have about 10 on my list that I need to work my way through there's a couple that I need to do a little research and practice on first before I get to them but I will get to them if you go over to Pinterest and you search for snappy coin pouch snappy card pouch and only look for those. Don't go wandering around because remember, Pinterest is dangerous unless you set yourself a time limit. You'll see pages and pages of these little wallets come up. It's really simple. You can use any design you want. I made this one rounded. I cut the corners off on this one. And the one we're going to make today is just going to be straight across on both edges. So there won't be no trimming and no curving. I went ahead and made myself a little cardboard template for this one just because of the curve. I wanted to get a nice round curve. You can use a bowl or a plate or if you have a, a circle type maker that you can trace the circle. And for the ones like this, I just went ahead and I took, I folded it over like this. When I had my fabric, I folded it over and I just took an inch and a half. I lined it up on my mat here. And I just drew a line from an inch and a half to an inch and a half, and I just trimmed it off. You can eyeball it. You can, like I said, we're gonna leave one straight across so we can see what that looks like. Or you can stick with the curved one like this. And this fabric pretty. So as I said, I made a template for the curved one so that I can always have that curve nice. I tend to either, like I said, draw around a plate or I kind of sketch it with a pencil until I get a nice round curve. And with a curve, I like to have a template for it. For the rest of the ones, I'll just use my rotary cutter and cut them out. So what are we going to need to make this? Well, we're going to need snaps, or you can use Velcro. And these are the snaps that are cam snap. I like to use these, but you also can use the ones that you hand stitch on. So anything you want, you can put You can put where they put the little, the little loop of a ponytail holder and then put a button around it. You can add a buttonhole here. Anything you want. I like this, like I said, the snaps are nice and quick and easy. I tend to buy a hundred of them at a time. I'm gonna try to remember to put the link down below. I usually get a hundred black and a hundred white. They do come in all different colors. I have some colors left over from when I bought a variety pack. But the hundred, you get like 10 of each color. So a hundred of them goes really quick. But I know with black and white, they're always going to work. 
on my project. We're also going to need two pieces of fabric. I've cut mine at 5 inches by 10 inches, 5 inches by 10 inches of course. I have a liner and I have an outer fabric and then I have a same size piece 5 by 10 of lightweight fusible interfacing. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and iron that to the back of my outside fabric. You could put it on just your lining. You could put it on both. If you're using a denim fabric, a corduroy, upholstery weight fabric, something that's a little bit thicker and sturdier, you can go ahead and skip the interfacing if you like. This just gives it a little bit extra structure. This one I made with no interfacing. It's just two pieces of fabric and you can see it scrunches up. It just, it's not a problem. It still works just as well. This one I have the interfacing in. It's, I mean, you can still scrunch it up, but it's still got a bit of sturdiness to it. I think it depends on what you're making them for. If you're just making a couple people, a couple of them for gifts for friends or something, and you want to add the interfacing, then go ahead and go for it. It gives a nice little structure to it. If you're making them for, let's say you want to put the gift card in for Christmas and you really think the person is just probably going to throw away the envelope. Let's see if you're making it for, you know, three-year-old nephew Joe or something like that. He may or may not keep it. But one thing with Joe, if you have a little nephew like that or niece, if you put Velcro, they can put their little race cars in here. They can put their, their fun money if they get a couple quarters from mom and dad. They can put any of those little... I know girls always have little dolls and shoes and stuff to go with it. So you can always go ahead and make it in kid-friendly colors and maybe they'll still like it. And as I said, it works just as well without the interfacing, but I like the way the interfacing just gives it that little bit more structure. So maybe if you wanted to sell these, that it would be good to use it. Now remember, if you're doing the iron-on interfacing, then make sure that the little rough bumpies are touching your fabric and not your iron. And I always do a little test in the corner just to make sure it doesn't stick to my iron because even if I'm paying attention and I think I got it right, sometimes I don't. You could put a pressing sheet on top, one of those non-stick like Teflon mats and stuff like that. I just kind of give it a little bit of a touch down so it stays down like that. And then I flip it over and then I give it a good press in to make sure it's going to stay. So we go ahead and give that a good pressing and make sure it's all nice and adhered. And I give my iron a good pressing just in case, a little bit of steam. Did I press that to the right side of the fabric? Okay, so I think I pressed that to the right side of the fabric. But you know what? The outside of this fabric, the, the wrong side looks just as good and I'm just gonna leave it like that and use it anyways. It's still perfectly good. I'll keep it for myself to use it for something and it won't be a problem. But maybe next time I'll pay a little more attention to what's going on instead of chatting with you guys. All right, so let's find, this is the right side of this fabric. So I'm gonna put right sides together. And I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch all the way around, but since we need to flip it the right side out, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little spot over here, a couple of inches. We don't need to pull too much through that hole, so we don't need to leave a big gap. I try to leave it down towards one of the, the, the bottoms or the top, however you want to look at it. I like to have it somewhere along here. So you can either leave it here or here. It's going to end up in the same spot one way or the other. So somewhere along the bottom. I don't like to leave it along the top and I don't like to leave it along this edge. Because as you can see, I did not stitch along this one at all. So we're going to have to stitch around it to close it up afterwards. So leave your gap just a little here on the side. I'm going to go stitch around this and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I went ahead and stitched all the way around it. And I left a little opening here for turning. That's a good thing. Like I said, a lot of fabrics have two sides. One side is just lighter than the other. If you accidentally stitch it down to that, if it's not going to work for the pouch you have, just go ahead and set it in your scrap bin. You can always use it for something else later. Maybe you can turn it into a flower or cut it up in smaller pieces. It could be used for a lot of things. I wouldn't get too upset and just throw it away. Me, I just still use it because it's going to be all right. It'll be all right. Now for my corners, as usual, I just like to take off the corners. 
I did a quarter inch seam allowance around everywhere. So I'm not gonna do any trimming. If you chose, sometimes they tell you to use like a 3 8 seam allowance and then they have you trim it down afterwards. But a lot of us are quilters, so just go ahead and doing a quarter inch, it's not, doesn't hurt us. We're pretty good at making that seam. Then I just take some hemostats because I didn't make my hole too big and I don't want to try to jam my fingers up in there. And I just use them to turn it right size out. And then as usual, I have my Lucite plastic crochet hook. You can use tips of your scissors, but I'd be very careful you don't poke all the way through. A pencil that hasn't been sharpened, a pen that you haven't, you know, you have one of those clicky pens that you haven't used, or you can just run your finger up there if you can get your finger that far up. They said for this one, I'm just using the straight edges. As you can see for this one, I just curved around the edge. You, what you'd want to do here is you want to go ahead and cut some of little reliefs in there or pinking shears so that when you turn this back around, it doesn't bunch up and it allows it to lay flat. I trimmed these up before I stitched it together so I had those nice angles. But if you just want to go quick and simple, just leave everything in a rectangle and leave all your points straight there. Then I go ahead and I take it, that almost takes that watercolor and make it look a little bit more watercolor because it's just faded out a little bit. I'll take this over to the iron and I'll give it a good press. And what I want to make sure is that I have these, this little opening, make sure everything's tucked in there nicely. I'm going to give it a good press and then I'll show you the next step. It's all nice and flat and pressed out. Now at this point you could still change your mind and decide which one you want on the outside and which one you want on the inside. I'm gonna stick with this on the outside. If I did not like the way my little oops went, I can go ahead and use that on the inside and then you wouldn't see that I made my little oops. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick with it on the outside like I planned. Let me find my little opening. All right, so there's my opening. So I wanna put him down here and you're gonna fold it up maybe two thirds. When I did the rounded one I just kind of went up to where it started to hit the curve and this one I just still went a little bit two-thirds and just waited give me some space here the best way to figure it out is to put your pouch where you think you want it and see if you got enough room to close it slide it down a little and if you like it at that size and you think you have enough flap covering it down or maybe you want to go down a little bit more so maybe you like it right there so then our next step is to take it to the sewing machine and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and stitch all the way around and top stitch it. And while we're doing that, it's going to close up the hole and it's going to secure this fold and we're not going to have any visible seams. When I did my first one, I went ahead and I stitched all the way around, including across the bottom. You have an option that you can stitch across this part of the top. So when you're sticking it in, maybe it'll help keep it a little bit sturdier. I chose not to. And then after I did this one, I thought, well, let me see what it looks like when you don't stitch around the bottom. I like how this has that puffier look to it, but the thing that you have to be careful with here is when you're doing this, you have to back stitch at each spot. So I still have to trim a couple little threads. And I just used white thread because that's what I had in my sewing machine. But if you're going to maybe back stitch here and skip all that bottom and just stitch around the top, you might want to use a thread that's more matching to your main fabric. Sometimes when you're back stitching, I know it's just me being picky, but sometimes when you're back stitching, when you're going back, you're going right back on the thread. And if you don't hit it correctly, or sometimes it makes it look darker and thicker in that one spot because there's two sections of thread that's going on there because you back stitched, then maybe you might want to use a, a blending thread that's going to be a neutral or that's not going to be noticeable. And the other thing that I do is when I'm doing it this way, I go ahead and backstitch here 
at each of these little flat parts where the bottom meets up here because that's going to be your most spot with the tension and I like to have just a little back stitch there just to keep it extra secure because if it's for a kid and or you're you know someone with larger hands and you're putting things in and out all the time it's nice to have that extra bit kind of like if you look at the back of your blue jeans where your pockets are they have their top stitching goes over it a couple times and that just keeps it nice and sturdy So I'm going to go take this over to my machine and I'll stitch it and I'll show you what it looks like. Once again, I left the bottom so it's nice and rounded and I started in each spot here. So I just trimmed my threads. I backstitched. Since I'm not using Velcro, I can go ahead and do this. If you were to use Velcro, you'd want to sew it on before you went and stitched it all around here so you can sew your Velcro piece into there and then add this one to the top. You can put your piece here first and then wait and do this afterwards, but this one would be kind of hard. I mean, it could be done, but it'd be kind of hard to put it on afterwards. But I'm going to add a snap to it. I use my cam snaps, as I said. The only thing tricky about these is you have to decide where you want it first. So you would poke your hole through. Say I wanted it. You can measure it and say, okay, halfway, down a quarter inch, half an inch, however you want to do it. And I just put it through the top, right? Now you can't just poke a hole through here because it would go all the way through the pouch into the back. So then I would just take a little pen or pencil. I'd go right into that hole and just mark a little spot on my fabric. Then I can gently hold this, make sure I'm not gonna poke through my fingers or anything. I tried to figure it all out before I stitch it together like this and it, it just I couldn't get it to line up perfectly so I found for me that this was the best way if you can figure out how to do it and it works for you before you stitch these sides together then go for it if you were just hand stitching them on you would just be hand stitching the part here so you can match it up and then hand stitch that part on there I'll go ahead and show you how easy it is to use this can snap I don't think we've used it on here before So when you buy these snaps, you're gonna get three pieces. You're gonna get the rounded snap button part. And they look like that. So we're gonna need one for each section. And then you get male and female parts. You have the one that sticks up. This is the one that's gonna snap in two. So there's your male, I like to put that on the top. That's got the big snap part that sticks out. And then this one is the female, so it has, it's hard to see on black. It has a little groove that you put it in. It's like a little dish, a little bowl, and that goes on the bottom. You can do it either way. I just always think a lot of times when you see stuff that you see the outside snap part on the top and the little part that it goes into on the bottom. So our button part of it, and just pop it through the hole. The hole is smaller then the little snap that goes through so you kind of push it in a little bit which holds it so i can let go of it and it's not going to fall off some of the snap sets that i bought from like walmart and stuff the holes are the same size so when you go like this they fall out and then i take the male side and i make sure that the snap part is on the outside because that's the part you need to you know and my little tool here it's got a little divot of a a little bowl like thing here and this rubber part that pushes down and you can just easily go like that so I put the snap part down into this bottom black part where it holds the bowl close this down and watch how easy this is that's it now I do like to spin it and give it a second press just in case sometimes a third so that parts there now this one's a little bit trickier because we're gonna have to put the button part on the inside so you kind of got to feel it and I usually just use my nails to slide it down and now this one oh you see that bowl there on the inside so I want to have that that bowl sticking up so that when I snap this down that it's going to go into there I just slide this into my pouch I find it to where it's sitting in the little bowl receptacle make sure everything's kind of lined up neatly in there just give it a press 
give it a second one just to make sure it's in there tightly and that's it these snaps are really easy if you have to you could set it down like this and use the table for the pressure if you don't have enough to squeeze in you could go down like this if you can't even do this they do have the presses that you can go like this with and i've heard that the ones that go like this are a lot easier for people with the strength issues or the arthritis issues there you go quick and easy now this one as you can see it has it has kind of wings as you see they already want to stick up this one you're gonna you're cutting off those wings i haven't put a snap in it yes so these are cut off so they they're not going to flap up as you can see this one that's trying to do it already and of course the rounded ones stay nicely these are the ones i'm used to seeing like when you get things at a store or something they're more rounded like that and i really do like that shape So there you go, three different types, all from the same pattern, which is a little curve or a couple cutouts or straight across. Whichever ones are going to work for you, whichever ones you want to whip through really quick, they don't take no time at all. They make great little gifts, little tuck-ins, and they're great to teach kids or new sewers on how to make a quick project. That's it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Remember, if you like these type of videos, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can see more like them. If you ring that little bell, YouTube will let you know anytime I put up a new video. On this channel, I not only do a Sew With Me on Fridays, I also do a Talk To Me Tuesday where I give you a little bit about what's going on in my life. Maybe if I've spent a marathon cleaning my house or working in the garden, and I try to show you some type of a quilting project that I've been working on. And then I have Whip It Wednesdays where I show you anything that I've been working on in the craft room from the week before. And every now and then you might get a bonus one. If you head on over to Patreon, I do have some bonus videos that are over there for free. And there's also some for my patrons. Everything's listed down below. I have some introductory videos and different videos that explain what Patreon is. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye.